Well, if we're talking about ends of the spectrum, we had Texas way over here. We had A&M way over there. Somewhere in the middle is Texas Tech. Sure. And that game against your Oregon Ducks. Oregon wins 38-30. We were talking about this one on Slack earlier. And at least in the early part of this game, felt as if Oregon had the upper hand. Like they were going to run away with this thing. Yes. And we both felt very confident about the um, point spread. Thankfully... Sorry, Doggos. A little bit of a front door cover here on a pick six, a very odd pick six down the stretch of Tyler Shuck that went back for an Oregon touchdown and gave them the win and the cover by eight here. But um, this one kind of turned on a dime. Mm -hmm. Oregon made mistakes. They had penalty after penalty. There was like all sorts of things that culminated in Texas Tech eventually coming back and grabbing the lead here fairly late in this game. I know you watch just like a hawk because you're an Oregon guy. If you look at your backdrop, you got Oregon stuff littered throughout. That's what, not terrible. There's a duck here and there. We're all right. What 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 was what was this? I don't even know. Oregon won a clunker because the number of penalties, both you know, procedural and in the middle of plays, whatever, it was alarming. The Oregon won a game as the clearly more undisciplined, undisciplined team in this game. And when you see an undisciplined team, it's a poorly coached team. And so they need to get better because the the number of free yards was, it was alarming. So let's start with the good from Oregon because they won the game. They covered and they probably shouldn't have covered because Jeffrey Bossa, who had that game ceiling pick six when they were up one late, probably should have just taken a knee and that would have been the game. And then, but you know, Texas tech gets the, the ball down one possession to, to drive down the field and had an opportunity with the hail Mary before it was broken up and intercepted to, to seal the victory officially. So the big thing with Oregon was they couldn't run the ball. They were one of the absolute best teams nationally running the ball last season. They have a new look offensive line, their left tackle of the future, the number one overall or number one overall offensive lineman, I believe last in last year's recruiting class had three false starts at left tackle, Josh Connerly still looks good, but needs to get better. And uh, they really weren't able to do much downfield after an opening drive or not opening drive but an early long touchdown pass to Troy Franklin over the top and so a lot was taken away from the Oregon game plan on offense but the the yardage that they picked up was largely swing passes they played heavier sets a couple tight ends in there Patrick Herbert made a bunch of plays Justin Herbert's little brother and defensively they have a pass rush they have a pass rush they were able to overwhelm at times Texas Tech's offensive line and that changed the complexion of this game that he was forced into bad throws. He was forced out of the pocket. And come the fourth quarter, it held up. And that was that is a new thing for Oregon after one of the absolute worst years rushing the pass that Oregon has had last season. On the Texas Tech side, I thought their defensive game plan and bringing a lot against the run but keeping safeties back was really sound. They tackled super well. Tyler Shuck made a bunch of plays with both his arm and his legs. He was basically the entirety of their He was the impact. offense. He was the he offense. Was the offense. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, in the fourth quarter, he just kind of slowed down. And a lot of that was due to Oregon. And a lot of that was due to some self-inflicted errors uh, of shucks, including that pick six at the end of the game. But the fight from Texas Tech, the crowd, the atmosphere, the, the back and forth nature, and it was like five lead changes at the end of it, was it was a great game. It was awful for me to watch as an Oregon fan, but the the playmakers from Texas Tech came out and... Really, the defense, Tim DeRuiter's defense for Texas Tech was what really stood out to me. That and, and the combination of uh, those dudes and Tyler Shuck. So Oregon, fortunate to come out with a win because because of those penalties, because of the the inconsistent play, 100% uh, won a clunker. So good for yeah. them. Yeah, and, and we talk often on this show about how, we've been saying it for years, mm -hmm. the greatest improvement, greatest amount of improvement typically takes place between week one and week two. Yes, Teams go out there week one, see what they got. Coaches try to shore up everything in time for week two, and then you see that improve. We saw that with Texas Tech because Texas Tech lost a week ago on the road in Laramie, and which was a weird place to play, and we were we were <laughs> cursing that game sure. before it even happened. But the fact that now they come home and take Oregon to the gun, I think, is a testament to where this team is at. So they're 0-2. It's not the start that they had envisioned. However... I think given the nature of this game, you can see the potential. And hopefully Tyler Shuck stays healthy. Hopefully they continue to build on this because 
the potential is very obvious. Yeah, I I agree. It's much more fun rooting for a team that's two and zero than rooting for a team that's one and one. And so good for Oregon for surviving this. A lot of optimism about the defensive front. They'll get a little bit healthier on defense. Secondary needs to be a lot more disciplined. But uh, if you're a top 15 team and you're you're favored on the road in a tough place to play, winning's great.